Hello, my name's Karina Thompson and welcome to another episode in the series Mastering the Basics of My Sona Embroidery Software. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the Express Design Wizard and showing you how you can easily take your own image and turn it into your very own unique embroidery design. If you're a subscriber or own a copy of My Sona, or perhaps are just interested in finding out a bit more about embroidery software, why not subscribe to our free YouTube channel and that way you won't miss out on any of our episodes. In this video, I'm on a PC with the platinum level of software, but everything I show you today you will also be able to do in the gold level of the MySona embroidery software. On a Mac computer, the wizards in actual fact are called assistants and the assistants tend to be over on the right hand side of the screen. But all the concepts that I show you in this film will be applicable if you're using a Mac computer. So let me start off by talking about where you can find the Express Design Wizard. There are a couple of places. Over here on the Create tab We've got the option here for Express Design and you can either do Express Design into the hoop where you choose the size of the hoop or you can actually draw a rectangle um, that you want the size of your embroidery to be. Also you can go File and here on the Welcome page is Express Design. So if you're opening up the software and you know that you want to digitize an image, then you could open the Express Design Wizard there. So I'm going to click on that. In this video, I'm only going to talk about the first option, Express Embroidery. I will talk about using the Express Trace and the Express Border in a future series of films where I'm going to introduce you into digitizing using MySonet. So please look out for that series on our YouTube channel. I have checked the Create Express Embroidery. So what this means is the software will look at the image and it will create an embroidery using satin and fill areas. So I'm going to click Next. And this is where the software is saying, well, where's the picture coming from? I'm going to load a picture from the download samples that you can download from the uh, MySonet website. They're free, they're on the download page. And this, these pictures are um, in the pic pix file of embroidery in samples. And in this case, I'm going to use the example of this squirrel here, animal number nine. So I'm going to click on him and I'm going to click OK. Now, let me just take a moment to talk about the type of images that tend to work best with the Express Design Wizard. They tend to work best on clear images with not too many graduated colors. So, for example, something that has a cartoon or clip art style. You might find that you get good results using photographs, but you might actually find that you get a better quality using the photo stitch wizard. And on a PC, can you see it's that photo stitch wizard is over here. An image like this, which is a clip art, I know is going to give me a great result. So you, there are some other options. It might be that you can paste your image, but please remember that you must have the copyright to the image if you are going to digitize from it. You might have a scanner or camera directly linked to your computer. The software has the potential for you to either create a new picture using the draw and paint modules within MySonet, and there's also this scope that you can actually edit your picture. But I don't need to do any of that. I'm gonna then click next. This next a uh, series of windows would allow you if you wanted to, for instance, uh, crop your image. So we've got our original here. Here's my preview. Again, in this case, I'm not going to do that. 
we have the zoom options up here if you need to uh, take a closer look at any aspects of your image. It might be that you need to rotate your image. It might be that um, you've got some perspective corrections that you need to skew or unskew your picture. And the slider here allows you to make changes in terms of the aspect ratio. And if you have made any of those editorial uh, changes, you can actually save the picture. But again, I'm not going to do any of that. So I'm going to click Next. The next window is about design size. And you've got two options. I'm going to use the Fit Design to Hoop. If I wanted to, I could change the size of my hoop. But it could be if you know you want your design to be a very specific size, you check this box and then you can change your size down here. But in this case, I'm going to stick with the Fit Design to Hoop. And again, I'm going to click Next. And this is where the software begins to make choices about what's going on with your imagery. Now you can see we've got this blue background here. If I was to stitch this out as a blue background, a couple of things would happen. My embroidery might be very dense and so it wouldn't be very flexible. And also it would take ages and use up loads of thread. So in this case, I don't want that blue background stitched out. So if that's the case, check the automatically remove the background color. So you can see we've got this checkerboard over here and that's showing me that that area is transparent. But I don't know if you've noticed here, we've got a little bit of blue where there's this gap between the squirrel's tail and his body. And if I want to remove that, I can check this bottom box and here it is, that blue's gone. And it might be that somehow the software actually hasn't picked up what actually is the background color that you want to use. And if that's the case, you can use the color picker to select a different background area. Again, I'm happy with that. On a sort of cautionary note, if you have chosen a photograph, you might find because of the many colors that are involved, that your color selection might be 20, 30, maybe even 40. Uh, uh, color changes that the software is suggesting and you might find using the arrows to click down reducing that but checking what's going on in your thread color preview window is a useful way to reduce that number but again if you're working from a photograph consider using the photo stitch module so I know that I'm happy with this and again I'm going to click next the little cogwheels going round is the software generating that. So again, once again, we've got our options up here if we need to uh, zoom in or out to have a closer look. But let's talk about what's going on with the Fabric Advisor. On this pull down arrow, we've got some different choices um, of fabric that at this stage, the software might, for instance, let's say if you're working on knit, that's going to be a stretch surface and the um, software can make some adjustments that would help your um, embroidery if it's been stitched out on knit, say for instance, rather than woven. Again, I'm going to stick with woven. It might be that you want a design underlay, particularly if you've got big areas of fill pattern, because that helps stabilize your embroidery. So I'm going to say yes to that. I'm going to check that box. Now the preferred stitch type is basically um, asking the software, well, do you want it to be um, uh, uh, areas of satin or fill? So let me give you an example. I'm going to move the slider all the way up to eight. And if I check preview, look what's happening with his nose and his toes, that that's been changed to uh, a satin fill. OK, but in this case, I don't want that. So I'm just going to take that all the way back. I'm going to just recheck that refresh preview. That's quite a useful thing if you've got uh, lots of different uh, sort of small areas of line that you, perhaps it might read a little bit better as a, uh, a satin line. And at this point, I'm going to click finish. And here's my embroidery. This is good to go. I can go straight away, click on center my sonet or do a file 
and uh, export it onto my USB stick. How quick, how easy was that? So you can see how you can use the Express Design Wizard or the Express Design Assistant if you're on a Mac to take a, a, a simple image of your own and turn it into a unique embroidery design. So my golden rules for using the Express Design Wizard if you're making an embroidery is think about the quality of your original image. Now this short film is just showing you how to use the Express Design Wizard to digitize an embroidery from a simple clip art. I haven't shown you how to get the best results using the trace or the border options. However, I will be showing you how to do that in my new series of videos, an introduction to digitizing in my Sonet embroidery, where I'm going to show you how to use the wizards and the digitizing modules to create the most fantastic, unique embroidery designs. So please look out for that series. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're not going to miss any of those episodes. If you found this a useful film, please give us a thumbs up. Happy sewing.